For more on the story, we are now joined by Professor Gita Ramji, Director of the HIV Prevention Research Unit at the South African Medical Research Council in our Cape Town studio. Professor Ramji, thank you so much for joining us. Now, South Africa has today begun the clinical trial. Um, how significant is this development? It's very significant because it's mainly a uh, target, it's designed for the South African epidemic and we're building on the success of the RV144 trial that took place in, uh, in Thailand uh, a few years ago and that re result showed a 31% effect so we modified the vaccine for the current, the clade that is circulating in South Africa, which is clade C, but we also modified it in a way that it will enhance the re immune response. So we're very hopeful that this particular vaccine, which is designed for South African epidemic, will have some kind of positive response. Now, what are the HVT and 702 vaccines based on? Sorry, can you repeat that? What are the HVTN702 vaccines based on? Well, it's based on the, um, the positive results of the RV144 trial that, uh, that, was, that took place in uh, Thailand. And the result showed that this, uh, the, the result showed an effect of 31% in preventing HIV infection. And that trial was conducted in among 16,000 uh, uh, participants in Thailand. The difference is that in Thailand, uh, the, the circulating HIV is a uh, clade B or E, whereas in South Africa, the circulating HIV clade is clade C. So what we had to do is build on the success of the 31% seen in the Thai trial and modify it in such a way that we'll have an enhanced immune response by the vaccine that is uh, uh, formulated for this particular trial. Now, Prof, the SAMRC has encouraged the public to participate in the study. What sort of measures will be put in place for those that end up being infected? As we know, I think it's over 5,000 people who will be partaking. Yes, for those people who do get uh, infected with HIV during the course of the trial, um, the, we have uh, referral systems to the health systems where they will get care for their HIV positive st status. The referral systems are in place. However, during the course of the trial, when they do become infected, we will then monitor them for six months and still and thereafter refer them to, for care in the public sector. Now, as we know, these, uh, most, most of the people who are partaking are volunteers. How easy or how difficult was it to find people to take part in uh, the, the program? So we've just started the study. So today was in KwaZulu-Natal. We vaccinated two individuals. Uh, but uh, it's a long process. We do a community-wide education. We partner with community groups. We partner with community working groups who work with us on the science of the research as well as the ethical issues around research. Once we provide this education, participants who are interested are invited. They are pre-screened whether they meet the eligibility criteria. That is, they should not be pregnant in the case of women. They should not have... Uh, they should not be HIV positive, and they should be in fairly good health. So there is a, a screening process that we have to follow. But I think uh, people are committed to finding a, a solution for the HIV epidemic, and we do have a lot of interest. So hopefully we will be able to meet the 5,400 uh, participants in the, in the time that we would like to they have, to they have them enrolled. Speaking of time, Prof, the National Institute of Health is expected to release the results in 2020. What happens if the scientific exploration produces a negative result? Well, I think from every negative, there is a positive learning lesson. And what we'll do is if the results are negative, we will learn from that and build on, on, on whatever we learn to build and modify new developments, not only for vaccines, but any future biomedical technology that we build. So I think, although it may be seen as a failure, but we, we always learn from failures and you make, you improve that, improve the design of the study, you improve the vaccine to take it one step further.
Now, according to a study released by SAMRC, HIV is still the leading cause of death in South Africa. Now, this is despite health intervention information and resources being available. Why do we still have a high rate of infection? I think the epidemic in South Africa is uh, where we have oh, one 1,000 people in, getting infected every single day. And the vulnerability, there are com multiple components to the vulnerability of HIV. There is social uh, bi behavioral components, there is structural components, access to care, people not taking care. There's a whole lot of prevention options like condoms if used consistently can prevent HIV infection. However, these are not used consistently. So you have all the tools to prevent HIV, but the tools only work if they're used. And I think one of the concerns is that we need to provide more options, options for people to use whatever they feel that suits their lifestyle. And I think um, condoms certainly are not the option that most people would like. And therefore, we have to look at alternative ways to provide means of uh, protecting uh, uh, them from acquiring HIV. I think one of the main reasons we're having these high infection rates is because we are uh, a, a nation where there is uh, a lack of condom use, but also um, people, the interventions that are available are not used correctly and consistently. Professor Gita Ramji, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have to leave it there for now. That was Professor Gita Ramji from the South African Medical Research Council joining us live from our Cape Town studios. And more news, Fidel Castro's ashes left Havana today at the start of a journey across the island. The expedition will end at Castro's final resting place.